Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. First of all, I just want to apologize for not posting much content so far this year. There's been an awful lot going on in my life and I just haven't had the capacity to sit down and film anything. So I do apologize for that. I have a lot of ideas of things that I want to film. It's just finding the time, getting the energy, having all of the stars aligned together to allow for that just hasn't happened to date. But here we are, I'm sitting down, I have an opportunity to film today, so that's what we're doing. And what I'm going to do today, if you haven't read the title, is I'm going to share with you some of my grocery staples. So these aren't necessarily full meals, and in fact they aren't, but these are the items that I just always have on hand. I've narrowed it down to 10, there are some others, but these are the ones that I just always make sure that I'm stocked up on. And so I wanted to share them with you in case this helps you with your shopping list or just gives you some ideas of some alternate foods that are out there. If you're new to the channel, then hello and welcome. My name is Kara, and at the end of August of 2019, I underwent the RNY gastric bypass surgery. Since that time, I've lost and maintained a loss of over 100 pounds. So a lot of the foods that I'm going to be showing you are geared more towards the post-bariatric surgery lifestyle. I will address up front, I'm not a dietitian or a nutritionist, and every surgeon slash surgery clinic has different recommendations for their patients after this kind of surgery, so always follow those guidelines, but I am sharing with you some foods that will help with the protein intake primarily, although there are some other items in here that it's not so much with the protein, but I make it work and incorporate it into my overall eating style. I will say I don't follow any sort of strict regimented eating style or plan. I don't follow a keto plan. I don't count my calories and I don't pay a lot of attention to macros. Although of course I do look at my labels and I try to pick foods that are healthier. I do pay particular attention to protein, sugar and fat, trying to keep the sugar and fat content as low as possible or at the very least under the 10 gram ish mark. And with protein, I do try to maximize the amount of protein, but again, every surgeon has different recommendations in terms of how much protein you should be ingesting in a day. As well, as you move away from surgery, those protein needs become a bit different over time. So what it is that I ingest in a day is going to be different than somebody who's only just had this surgery. So. First up, there's a duo of items. I am counting them as two items, but they are a duo that I just rely on very heavily and I always have them in stock. One is this here from Bruce. This is a protein coffee. It has 20 grams of protein in it, 120 calories for the entire pack, and it is gluten-free, non-GMO, grass-fed protein. There is seven grams of sugar in this container here. However, I don't like the taste of just black coffee. So when I order coffee from a coffee shop, I usually do order it with two cream and two sugar, or double-double if you're Canadian, but that's not what I wanna be putting into my body on a daily basis. So rather than going for sugar and cream, I go for Premier Protein. In specific, it's usually the vanilla or the chocolate flavor. Here in Canada, we don't get as many varieties of the Premier Protein as you do in the United States, but Suffice it to say, vanilla and chocolate work very well with the coffee. So depending on the mug or the cup that I'm using, I will either just add half of this or the whole thing and just do a one for one mixing. But I do find that it helps to make this more palatable, but also makes this more palatable because I do not like protein shakes on their own. I just find them cloyingly sweet, even though there's not a lot of sugar in them. So speaking of that, there is 30 grams of protein in this container, 160 calories, and one gram of sugar. So even though there's really not a lot of sugar in here, for whatever reason, I just find that these taste incredibly sweet, and so I don't enjoy drinking them on their own. I had a really hard time with that immediately after surgery when I was on like the full liquid diet. I had a hard time with these because I did find them so sweet. Of course, at that stage, you can only take like a couple of sips at a time before you're full, but here we are now. I can marry these two together and just enjoy a nice coffee drink that way. I'm getting 50 grams of protein combined, 
very few calories, very few grams of sugar. It does help me to feel sated for quite some time as well because there is so much protein, but it also gives me that caffeine boost that, let's be honest, I need on a daily basis. In fact, while we're sitting here, I brought a cup down, so I may as well just go ahead and mix this up. And then I'll have a drink down here as well while we talk about the other items. Pro tip when it comes to premier protein, shake the ever living heck out of it because sometimes this happens with soy milk as well. Sometimes it like congeals a little bit and it's really, really gross. So shaking is highly recommended. So there we go. I have a one-to-one -one mix in here and it makes for a very good mid-afternoon snack as well. Speaking of mid-afternoon snacks, I don't tend to eat a lot between meals. Like I, I do get hunger cues, but I don't find that I get ravenous between meals anymore, probably because I'm sipping on protein coffee throughout the morning, things like that. But I do like to have little protein bars kicking around. And when I say little, I mean little. So these ones in specific are from Built. I do enjoy the full size Built protein bars and I have a few flavors available upstairs in my kitchen, but I brought these ones down because these are the Built Bites. What these are are just half of the size of the regular size protein bar and I love that because protein bars can be very filling and very dense so sometimes a little goes a long way. In specific this is the peanut butter brownie flavor which is my favorite flavor. You can get it in the full size or in the bite size and in here, let's see, in here you're getting 80 calories, 3 grams of fat, three grams of sugar and eight grams of protein. So not a bad mix. For the full size, just double those values. So what I, what I truly love about Built Bars though is that they taste incredible. These are not what you think of when you think of protein bars. I have tried so many of them and some of them are just like inedible, frankly. They're chalky, they have the chemical taste, they have those like artificial sugar replacements in them like xylitol, which not only do they taste awful, but they also tend to upset at least my stomach. It really is like you're treating yourself to a chocolate bar, but it's one that actually helps your body and doesn't damage your body. So I love these. I have the chocolate brownie ones here at home. I have a mint chocolate one at the office, plus some full-sized ones there. And then I have a variety of other flavors as well. I highly recommend Built Bars. Now, as good as this is, I don't always want coffee for my caffeine kick. Sometimes I just don't wanna deal with mixing them or I just want something that's easy to grab on the go. And for that, I turn to sugar-free Red Bull and I always buy them in the flat. We keep them in our cold storage room and then I just have easy access to them. I just get the smallest cans available. I know sometimes at the grocery store you can find like these giant cans of Red Bull. I'm never gonna be able to finish one of those without feeling completely sick to my stomach, so I just stick with the smaller cans, but that is something that I always make sure that I have on hand. For quick on-the-go snacks, I usually turn to either cheese sticks or Black Diamond in specific has these cheese, nut, and fruit combos, and I really love those. So not only do I like them just as a snack on their own, because they are rather a complete snack. There's protein in there, there's some carbohydrates with the fruit, you're getting healthy fats with the nuts, and they are portion controlled, which I find very helpful. So not only is it a complete snack in and of itself, but I also like to add it to salads. So that also brings me to another item that I always have in my fridge, and that is some sort of salad mix, whether that's spring mix or baby greens, or sometimes I'll just do baby spinach, but I always have something on hand because I just find it so easy. You just grab a couple handfuls of the greens, throw one of those packs of the fruit and cheese and nuts on top. I usually cut up some cucumber to add or whatever vegetable we have on hand. Sometimes I'll put a hard boiled egg in there as well, top it off with a bit of dressing and there is a complete and fully satisfying meal for me. So I always make sure that I have those cheese and nut combos and that I have some sort of salad mix as well. As I just said, sometimes on my salads, I like to add like a hard boiled egg to the top and eggs are definitely another food that I always have on hand. We will buy them sometimes in the 18 pack or if I can find the 36 pack at Zayers, I will pick those up. Those eggs tend to be a little bit smaller, but that also works out really well for the kids because it's just not as much food for them. 
but I really like to have them on hand because I use them in a variety of ways. Not only can I just cook up hard-boiled eggs just to have on hand, either for a quick snack or adding as a garnish on a salad, but I also like to make egg salad out of it. And sometimes I will just eat that in a bowl on its own, almost like a meal itself, or I'll have some crackers with it, or I have found protein wraps as well, and I will use those. And those are a side note, but I'm gonna add a picture of those as well because they're also really great to have on hand. If you can't find the protein wraps in specific, the other one that I will often turn to are just the really small tortillas, like the little mini, well, maybe a bit bigger. There's like the mini, mini size, and then there's the small size, and then like your regular 10 inch tortillas. I like the smaller ones. I don't know if they're like a six inch or eight, uh, I don't know what size they are, but small tortillas as well. I usually get the whole wheat ones, and I use those instead of bread. I really don't eat a lot of bread. I didn't eat a lot of bread before surgery either. It's just not a big thing for me. But certainly now I eat a lot less in terms of like buns and things of that sort. If you watched my vlog that I posted recently about my little retreat to the um, winter camping area, you would have seen me make like a halloumi sandwich there. Or I had a rather large like Kaiser bun. I didn't mention in the vlog and I meant to, but I didn't finish all of that. At some point I take the top off the bun because I just can't handle that much volume of bread. And then I just eat it either open faced or Eventually I got tired of that and I just picked the halloumi off and added it to my salad. So I meant to say that in that vlog, but I'm mentioning it here. So all that to say, I don't eat a lot of bread. It's not a forbidden food to me. It's just not something that I really enjoy. What I like most when I eat bread is getting like a really good, like multi-green kind of bread. And then I will eat that with some peanut butter on it. Or I've tried, I have tried avocado toast. I cannot make myself like it. I need to get more creative with it and make it work for me because I really do like guacamole and I really do like the idea of avocado toast. I just don't like the execution that I've been able to come up with so far. So if you have any tips on that, please let me know down below because I want to like it. I just don't at this point. All that to say, I think I've gotten myself wildly off track, but I do like having the option of the protein wraps or the smaller tortillas. You can make anything with them. Frankly, I can roll up some egg salad in there. I can roll up some sandwich meats and just make an actual sandwich out of them. Or I'll make quesadillas of some sort. I like to uh, make up big batches of just like a Mexican inspired kind of chicken. There's no real name to it. It's just like a hodgepodge of ingredients that I've come up with where I throw chicken breasts into the slow cooker, add corn, black beans, crushed tomatoes, uh, chili powder, all sorts of good stuff. I throw it all in there, cook it all down, and I'll just eat that on its own or turn it into a quesadilla with those smaller wraps. Uh, but that's the whole point of that is that I do enjoy having those on hand. So yes, and I, I'm, I'm trying to find all the little crumbs to bring me back to the beginning of this wild tangent, and it all started with eggs. So yes, eggs on salad, eggs as a snack on their own, egg salad itself. I like making scrambled eggs. I like making, I don't really make omelets, but it's the same kind of idea. It's like a frittata basically. So basically an omelet that isn't folded over. Love doing that. And then I'll usually have like green pepper cut up, onion cut up and stored in the freezer. I can just add a few handfuls in there. I like to buy like the ham steaks and I'll dice them up really small and just throw a handful of that into the egg mixture as well. And it's a complete meal for me. We've covered eggs and we've taken this weird scenic route talking about bread alternatives. And what I was saying about avocado toast was that I really want to like it, I just don't. There is another food that fell into that category and that was cottage cheese. I wanted to like cottage cheese for a very long time, I've wanted to, and I just couldn't get there because it's lumpy and it's got a weird texture and it's just, you can eat a bite and then you're just like, I don't want it anymore. Add fruit to it. There, that's the simple solution. I find that if I add peaches to it or if I add strawberries to it, it's fantastic. And what's more, you can also add some frozen berries to it and then churn it up in the uh, blender and it becomes like a soft serve ice cream. It still has a bit of that like cottagey cheesy kind of taste, but then you also get that added sweetness of the fruit and it makes for a really nice snack. And because it has that texture and the coldness of soft serve, 
it kind of feels like you're eating ice cream, but it's about as healthy as you can make it. So cottage cheese is another one that I always have on hand. And then we always do have fruit of some sort, either berries for the kids for their lunches, or we have frozen berries, we have like canned peaches, all of that kind of thing. So I just get creative and switch out the fruit every now and then, but my absolute favorites are fresh strawberries or diced up peaches in with the cottage cheese. This will be the third and last cheese product that I talk about, but I just find cheese so easy because it has protein in it. You have to be aware of the fat content in it, of course, but cheese sticks are just an easy snack for me to grab. I can grab and run out the door with them. I can sit in front of the TV and just take my time, like peeling it apart string by string, making it last. But again, I'm just giving myself a little bit of additional protein, a little bit of calcium. There's not a ton of fat unless, of course, you're eating a bunch of them, which I don't. I find that one is satisfying. So we always have cheese sticks on hand. And finally, I want to talk about one item that I've picked up that I don't eat on a daily basis, but I always like to have it on hand, and it's for breakfast primarily, although sometimes breakfast for dinner is just the lane of least resistance, if I'm being perfectly honest. But what I have found is this protein oatmeal here from Kodiak. So I have used Kodiak in the past, and in fact, I think I've even talked about them on this channel in the past as well, I think with my holiday survival video that I did. I'm familiar with Kodiak from their protein pancake mix. I found it initially at uh, Costco, but then I just discovered this one here at, if it wasn't Zayers, it was Sobeys, but I'm pretty sure it was Zayers. So this is their instant oatmeal. So again, that convenience factor comes into play here. I've got two kids, I, like we're both working parents. We've got the dog that we need to walk in the morning. Like there's just a lot of stuff to do in the mornings. I don't have time to be making a bunch of crap for breakfast. So here we are. This comes in clutch because I can just grab one and take it to the office and make it there and just eat it at my desk as I'm turning my computer on and getting set up for the day. So in here, one packet gives you 190 calories. There's two and a half grams of fat. There's 10 grams of sugar. And then there's also 12 grams of protein. So one of the problems that I have with regular instant oatmeal is that it's really high in sugar and not much else. And that's not what I want for fueling my body. So something like this, again, I'm getting that additional protein. There's really not that much sugar in here. This in particular is the strawberries and cream flavor, which I find absolutely delicious. So if you pair this with this little concoction over here, right here, I'm pretty much getting my entire day's worth of protein needs met just at breakfast. So there we have it. Of course, there are other items that I always have stocked up in the house as well, but these are the ones that I really wanted to shine a spotlight on because these are the ones that really do help me maintain the weight loss that my gastric bypass surgery has afforded me. So I would love to hear from you in the comments what some items are that you always have on hand. Are there other little like protein hacks that you've come across that you can share with everybody else? Let me know in the comments. But with all of that said, I'm going to conclude the video here. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, I ask that you consider doing so. I really do want to build our community here and every like and every bit of engagement really does help to make other people aware of this channel. So with all of that said, thank you so much for taking the time to watch and I will see you in my next video. Until then, just be gentle with yourself. Bye for now.